Hello, everybody. Welcome to the GKC show. This is episode I have absolutely no idea, and it doesn't really matter. Kind of like points and stuff like that, and whatever that <laughs> nice <is>. food <laughs> line reference. Awesome. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, Sam, good to see you again. Uh, hey, and man. then we have a super, super special guest today. As you can see, Houdini, who you can't see. Also known as Deep Throat, apparently. <laughs> we got some big, big breaking news today, which is, uh, no, uh, so Houdini still doesn't want to be doxxed, and we certainly want to respect that, and this is actually a really cool way of doing it, so uh, so we appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so we just came off of the GKC meeting, so why don't we dive into that first, and Houdini, I saw you in there for the meeting, uh, so why don't you tell me your thoughts on... Yeah, on I missed it, so you guys are going to be able to fill me so in, too. Informing you. Yeah, I mean, I thought the meeting was great. It's you know a little less exciting today without crazy beta updates, but uh, I'm equally or more excited about the homepage getting uh, kicking the butt, and getting better, and yeah. being profile connected. I think that'll be great for everybody who has profiles and just exposure, be able to share them. Right now, it's you know limited usage sharing them. I think. Yeah, I don't. I feel like it's really difficult right now to try and navigate around and see other people's stuff. I know uh, they're talking about doing some kind of a profile ranking system, uh, and I, I guess initially going to be based on how many NFTs are are in there. But I really hope that they come up with a really cool system to weight what or, you know to determine what each profile is worth not not money value worth but you know what the how important it is that people see it uh, on the home page yeah, I think yeah. That's probably the case i, th I think it's probably it was probably one of those things where like number of nfts was probably just the easiest variable right. to put in there in terms of ranking so um yeah i think test it out that way and that's probably probably something they have coming down the pipeline yeah there's probably a lot better ways through views or some sort of upvoting but non-upvoting system kind of, kind of thing yeah i was thinking maybe that, like, that there might be some way for us to see not see the person's profile but just uh have a listing of collections and stuff like that and then we can vote on how important we think that collection is to people to be able to see and then you would accrue points based on that or I don't, they'll yeah <laughs> vote, on, vote on profile layout or I thought it would have been easy if they were going to do volume to do number of keys or number of profiles or whatever. Right. That's yeah, that would be a fair way to start it out is the number of keys. <clears throat> and then that, that way, whoever is invested the most gets to be seen first. And, you know, I, I don't think long term that's a great way to do it because then it's, you know, I paid to be number one on this platform and then it, then the platform doesn't have as much uh, viability, I guess, or, or I don't know what the right word is there. Yeah. Exposure, some probably. Yeah, Again, you, want to maintain, you want to maintain the decentralized nature of it all. So yeah, we um, want the best content, I think, to rise to the top, which is which is important for newcomers to see the really cool stuff. You know, people who have built awesome profiles. And I think that's an awesome segue when you're talking about best content created for uh, NFT.com so far. Uh, Houdini, I mean. Yeah, Your man. <laughs> aside, <laughs> aside from Ben Trekin's, uh, uh key listings, or which honestly I love the the notifications now on the Discord for the listings and sales is fantastic. Uh, I'm so excited that they added that. But uh, from a creative standpoint, Houdini, you're the man. So uh, what do you got going on? What's uh, what kind of projects you're working on? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I was fairly inspired by the. NFTcom launch and then the Discord community and all that was engaging. So I found found little inspirations here and there. Um, little little shout out on NFTcom content creators to KRJ too for that logo and such. So don't want to don't want to forget him. Um, nice. But yeah, my whole uh, the art that comes out of comes out of me and you know on the internet. It was a it was a hobby. It was something fun to do while I was trading stocks and watching tickers during COVID and sitting around and you know hustling options and stuff. And uh, people were making apes and rockets and stuff. And they, I you know wasn't too impressed. And I thought maybe I could do better. So I just for fun started making things. And it, it's really pretty innocent. Um, 
it gets a little mysterious with the shadowy figure and the non doc <laughs> <laughs> what are uh, what what are some of the tools that you're using to create because you do create some pretty interesting stuff in mostly in the animation kind of area yeah so photoshop's my first step almost always if i'm on at a desk um and then after effects from there mm -hmm. and typically into Premiere or DaVinci Resolve after that to polish it up a little bit and add some audio and stuff, uh, mix audio and, and those kind of things. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. I mean, this is like, this is the beauty of Web3 is that you can, you know, there's an outlet for creative people to get mm -hmm. their stuff out there in the world. And, you know, there's not, the barriers to entry are just falling rapidly. Um, you know, pre-internet, it was you know, there was, you had to go through like a gallery or an art dealer or an agent or something to get your artwork out there. And then web one, web two, you had to create a website and then you had to do um, search engine optimization and you had to get it out there and spread it. Uh, web three, you just create it and put it out there and build a little bit of a community and get some people interested. And it's, it, it's awesome. It's like a, almost a democratization of uh, the art world. Um, it's fantastic. And so people like you that are super talented can get your stuff out for other people to see and, and hopefully buy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, again, uh, democratization was the word I was going to use. You know, I think we all have real jobs and stuff in corporate world. We've seen that as well with the work from home and the, the sort of more freelancing lifestyles and, and such like that. Um, I know I'm in, I'm in media stuff day to day, so I've, I've always worked as a, an artist, but it's always been, you know, at the behest of someone else, and that, that's fine for the most part, but mm. it's, it's an opportunity here to, you know, just do your own thing and do it in a way with some vulnerability, you know, hence the non-doxing thing, too. I think that makes it a lot easier for artists to uh, put stuff out there, some of the stuff everyone does myself includes a little crazy a little off the wall and right. in this space there's so much content you can toss it out there and you know it'll die in two days if you don't talk about it so it's, it's fine it's a lot safer it's just a nice uh lack of responsibility i guess well i i wonder again you you raise a really good point in that there's a lot of artwork that's being created now my question is like what what do we do with all of this ip that people are creating like there's so much good stuff that's being created i feel like for every technological advance there becomes a wealth of stuff that gets created from it that when it reaches a tipping point it becomes something else you know so so i guess a really good example is the the world couldn't handle all of the content that the internet provides through YouTube and social media and all that kind of stuff. And mainly so, porn. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So, so my question is, we're creating all this stuff that right now there's so much it's hard for us all to continue to consume. What is the next thing that gets developed that utilizes all of what's being created so that it's, and I, I to be honest, I think it's the metaverse because now you have a place where all of this digital stuff can then live there are you know expansive hallways that you can just walk down forever that has you know content built into it and stuff like that i don't know yeah no that's a great great idea i think that's a great uh, i think there's a lot of people trying to build that metaverse right what is that metaverse right? and how many metaverses are there <laughs> well, I, think, I think what's cool about it is that they're that all of them together are supposed to equal the one Right, you can kind of dip in and out of as many of them as you want, and they'll yeah, all sure. look and feel different. Um, but about the art thing, and I think it's about NFTs. It's a really interesting thing. Thought about it a lot because all of us artists releasing stuff as NFTs and some selling, some not. The value of it is based on the hype of the NFTs right now, and I think targeting artists as the front line for nft was brilliant i mean you target people that are going to do your marketing for you basically and your advertising um, so i think that's brilliant but I, obviously I, there's no way that's the end game right i mean the art market's not that big in real life um, yeah right, that's true I, 
I think that uh, I think there's always going to be a, a place for. It. I mean, NFTs, like you were talking about, NFTs were born in art, and you know maybe it's not like Louvre worthy art. It gets you know, but a um, you know a cyberpunk, a board ape, those are types of art, and people appreciate them for what they are and their rarity, and obviously well, the the value that's associated with them. But but art's always going to be a piece of Web three, um, especially like you're talking about the metaverse, and I mean creating that, and it it's all art. I mean, on just some level or another, whether it's architecture, whether it's design, or whether it's digital fashion, or uh, just straight up artwork or videos or animations, uh, it's all going to be based around art. So, <clears throat> to your point, I think we I think we probably do reach a hyper saturation level at some point, but I think we're still a good ways off from that. Yeah. And further, further to the point, I don't think the art goes away. I just think the art gets built into whatever the artists in the communities decide to build next, that utility, that, that metaverse. You know, the, um, as we move, move forward, these metaverses will have their own currencies. Those currencies are going to be beautiful. You know, like the, the walls of the, the metaverse are going to be designed by artists because that's who's here building. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the artists will build the metaverse, absolutely. I think that's the. I think the first part of my point is a little negative, but it's it's all it's all golden from the perspective. Well, and I think what's unique about it is that each artist that contributes to the the metaverse that's been created there, but like the asset that I create that is going to be in that in that metaverse, they can all have some kind of stake in it without having to write long contracts for who owns this metaverse, right? <clears throat> I own the content that I put into this metaverse. And then if people enjoy it and purchase a copy of it to bring into their own little personal space, then, then that's great. And there are so many amazing things that go along with it, like <clears throat> the ability to add, uh, you know, perpetual royalties to artwork or to NFT artwork and things like that. I actually just, <laughs> I had a call today with a guy we've been trying to catch up, we met at NFT NYC. He he was act. They were actually the group that did the fake uh, Snoop Dogg, the dog Snoop. Oh yeah. Um, nice. And he reached out to me afterwards because you know I had put it up my Twitter and I'm like, oh my god, it's Snoop Dogg. I was totally geeking out. And he you know he found out there was this, <laughs> it was a uh, you know marketing bit, and he sent me a message on Twitter. He's like, <clears throat> dude, thanks for sending that out and getting us some uh, some views. Uh, sorry about it. You know we didn't make you want to feel bad. And I was like, dude. Are you kidding i appreciate the marketing it's fantastic like i don't care that i got duped like you guys did a great right. job but they got a ton of visibility from that and i didn't really know too much about their project uh their website it's called fair.fair like f-a-i-r.xyz and they've built one of the coolest things i've seen in a long time and it's specifically valuable to the nft.com community and the artists they built it they're on ethereum right now but they're going to branch out to other chains it's essentially a dumbed down as user-friendly as it could possibly be minting platform um so they have an api that's set up you literally just upload your artwork give it a name give it a price you can set royalties uh to be perpetual you can uh you can schedule different steps for your launch so you can mint in in batches and a couple clicks a couple clicks and they've also I don't know how they did it, but they implemented some kind of a queuing system that is massively knocking down the gas fees, um, even though it's on Ethereum. So um, it's it's really one of the cooler things I've seen. It's another instance of the barriers to entry being um, knocked down and just blown away. So any artist out there, you don't have to have any Web3 knowledge. You don't have to even know what Solidity is or what a smart contract is. It's all generated in the background. And as things like these come out, um, you know, you're good. This is this is one of the steps towards mainstream ado mainstream adoption. Yeah, and it's exciting when you see things like this, and uh, they're happening every day. It's such a cool thing to to kind of see in the early stages. That sounds great. I've been researching a lot of those, you know, on different chains mostly, but it's a it's a bit of a dearth. There's a few of them out there, but there's catches, and you're attached to that sort of minting token mm -hmm. for a weird little things like that so i'll definitely check it out by the name yeah, yeah they're launching in a couple of weeks and they actually their fee structure is pretty cool because they're only taking a percentage of the primary sale right. so if you add royalties for sec uh for perpet or if you have perpetual royalties for future sales they're not even getting a piece of that so um it's a re i think it's a really cool opportunity i think we talk a lot about uh you know all the hedera stuff and hedera's done that with uh the hedera token service the hts 
where they've created an API and it's really easy to upload uh, a collection. Uh, but I haven't I haven't seen anybody do this for Ethereum, and I think it could really be a game changer um, for a lot of people. I, I think that will need to be a core component of what NFT.com is to creators as well. They're really going to need to have a bucket of tools to attract the right creators, right? Because a creator is going to want the easiest button that they can push to be able to get their product out to as many people as they can. And while I, I know that the, the profile um, push that they're making right now is to make the site more attractive to people who want to come and take a look at profiles and check out people's NFTs. But when they start adding those tools that make life easier and better for a creator community, that'll be a, a big change. Yeah, it's all these quantum leaps that we see. Like I, you can almost see the progression of things that are going to take Web3 into the stratosphere. Um, you know, it's the ease of it's ease, ease of creation for uh, uh, content creators. It's um, some kind of a custodial or semi-custodial wallet structure so that mm -hmm. people can sign up with a phone number or an email address. Um, it's cross-chain compatibility um, that's secure. And um, yeah, those times, kinds of things that when they happen are just, you're just going to see Web3 have like mini explosions every time until, mm -hmm. until it becomes what I, you know, we all believe it will be. Yeah, I'm dying to move stuff across chains. Oh, yeah. yeah so <laughs> i know yeah, everybody is. for no purpose other than just to push it around <laughs> yeah i'm not going to start minting things again i'm kind of yeah. stalled a little bit not knowing where to mint or what to do or just trying to figure it out i guess no rush but... yeah there's definitely no rush because you can definitely be too early yeah for sure yeah so, and i mean this you know we're in this crypto winter now and nobody knows how long it's going to last mm -hmm. and and you know when when we're gonna bottom out but i mean this is the time to build we keep everybody mm -hmm. keeps talking about it i mean the smart yep. people are building right now jordan ta jordan talked about it on the call last week and pretty much everybody i talk to um you know five six seven calls a day and everybody's just talking about what projects can we start building now what can we do to be ready because when this next bull cycle happens that's going to be the one where it's, you know, crypto is not a scam anymore. Crypto is mainstream. There's all of this technology behind it that's actually going to impact your lives and people are starting to realize it. And I mean, these next three to six years are going to be just bonkers. Yeah, this next run is much different than the other runs because this next run goes right into mass adoption, right? The, the tools will all now be simple enough that you know us dollar coin is easy to use and you know it's just retailers will start to become will be on board so the general population will now start interacting with crypto in a meaningful way during this next run absolutely yeah there, it's gonna happen with nfts to start i mean that's right. obviously the most well, utility and everybody that's smart is getting their toes wet with nfts right now it's really the best way to understand how crypto works and and where the whole thing is moving not necessarily you know regardless of what you think of a certain project's artwork just getting involved and in understanding how everything moves around and develops in the community it builds is is super super valuable so my rec my recommendation to anyone is if you're on the fence just get involved yeah find a find a project you like reach out i mm -hmm. mean everybody's looking for help and it's such the the collaborative nature of web3 right now um yeah if you just like a project get on their website send them an email join their discord and say hey i'd like to be involved i swear to god nine times out of ten you're going to be like a moderator or a contributor or they're going to offer you a job <laughs> like it's yeah. it's really that it's it happens that fast right now just uh make a meme about their project and they'll ask you to be a moderator <laughs> <laughs> so houdini are there any are there any projects that uh that you like outside of of what you're doing personally like what yeah, kind of stuff do you gravitate towards I find new ones every day, basically. I sort of browse whatever new project lists or launch pads, and I, I seem to find two to four new things every week, basically, that 
are new enough, look good enough, or interesting enough, and cheap enough to sort of buy and just sit on and, and wait. Um, I usually buy a couple to 10 or whatever, and then, you know, if it goes up, I'll flip half of them and keep half of them, and then we'll see where it goes down the road. But um, what are that, some, what are the some light of the one? The light drawing one is amazing. It's an individual artist guy, so very, very low volume there. Um, the D-Gen Apocalypse, a little higher volume, a little better exposure, but again, individual artists, great stuff though. Um, and then XOXO, if you've seen that, the, uh, the, the two people kissing in different shapes and whatnot. Oh, no, made to check that out. It's two comic book artists that are fairly famous that uh, launched it. Uh, really good stuff. I have a bunch in my wallet or whatever I've posted about them before. Check it out. Are you following the Kumite project at all? Yeah, Kumite is great. I'm not following it because I don't, I mean, it's cool and I have a, a, yeah. a good handful of them, but I don't I don't want to engage into that community and get sucked into that, that rabbit hole just yet. You guys seem to be really into it and it's a lot of time, so I'm avoiding it for that reason for now. But yeah, I'm holding six or seven of them, I think. Yeah, and I'm not, to be honest, I'm not too involved with the project. I try and keep abreast of it, but like, I that's like, I don't understand a lot of what they're doing as far as like families getting together and doing. There's another project on Hedera that does raids and stuff too, the uh, yeah. Warsome Wizards or Warlocks or something like that. <clears throat> but there's uh, like, all the gaming ones are really interesting. Like, what was it? The deeds thing or ends what, what was their gaming thing last week that people got to go in and be in the vr briefly that was amazing oh yeah other other deeds for other worlds yeah that's that's really that's where we're all trying to get to that's amazing yeah it's just i mean like you were saying there's just there's just too many cool projects out there and not enough hours in the day like i i would love to be involved in all of these things and really dive deep and figure out what there's what's going on there's a cool project um over on ethereum called uh it's not so much in that with like the um individual like metaverse going on but uh, it's called block queens on uh it's a little bit higher floor it's like you know, yeah quick seven or something like that but i met the guy uh he did a lot of artwork um for presenters at uh um at the conference and he just sent me the he, he they took a bunch of pictures after i after i did the panel and he had like these prisms that he was putting in front of the uh, camera and he took a bunch of pictures and he's like, yeah, you know, I'll put these together and send them out. And I hadn't heard from him, so I was expecting anything. So he sent me, uh, he sent them to me the other day. He's like, yeah, check out my project here. These are for you. And they came out really cool. Like I have my Hoddle's Nuts t-shirt and yeah. there's like a cool background and filters on it. Uh, so that's his project. So I thought he deserved a little bit of a plug. Um, but yeah, it's just, there's just too many cool projects. So I think the best thing to do is pick a couple that you really like and really dive into them. That's at least my my personal uh, take on it. Yeah, I seem to pick a lot that I like. And then... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for Houdini, you pick less. I think... <laughs> Everybody else just picks something. <laughs> Uh, if, if there was one project I, I would say run to and buy, it's still open mint for probably the next forever. Uh, it's Sacred NFT, the, the ladies with the spiritual lady face things, they're, they're amazing. Uh, I've, I've been gravitating to a lot of the more female uh, NFTs on Solana a lot mm -hmm. too. Uh, I think it's called Cyber Degens, or, or these great women things, and uh, Biddies, it's the leftovers deviant, also great. But uh, Sacred NFT is really great, and the women that write the stories and make the art are wonderful as well. Yeah, there's another similar one uh, on Ethereum, uh, Kindred Heart NFTs. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, so. What's the big What's the big one called? The, is it World of Women? Or that's not, I've seen that one around. It's newer. It didn't didn't really attract me aesthetically, but I saw that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah more power to just more um, diversity in the space it's a bunch for of sure there needs to be much more women's voice in in this space uh i mean look, with right, three guys here talking with one no offense to you houdini but yeah. <laughs> i mean as far as we know that could be a filter and uh, on, a, on her voice and, i guess i know. shouldn't gender uh, yeah we don't know i shouldn't assume gender here for 
Yeah, it's, it's absolutely true. And it's really a systemic yeah. issue. Um, I guess we're getting a little off the rails here, but That's I definitely cool. want to hit on this point is the lack of diversity in the space. And some of it's kind of a, just the nature of the beast thing with where people, how people end up getting into Web3. So, you know, a lot of gamers and things like that, which are typically more male dominated spaces. Um, but there's a lot of issue with, you know, when we talk about how NFTs and Web3 are going to become so much more than just the art. Um, and there's the actual utility that's coming down the road. There are a lot of companies that are looking for funding and trying to get VC funding. And it, I'm, I was working with a woman who's based out in Wyoming and she's working on some funding. She's actually testifying uh, before the House Financial Services Committee um, about this exact issue and kind of the bro culture um, in, in uh, the VC world. And I, I'm going to get the numbers a little bit off, but they're close. Uh, Q1 of 20 of this year, um, it was something like $2 billion was raised in seed funding for just for DeFi and fintech mm -hmm. projects in Web3. And zero of those dollars went to women run or women founded wow. projects. So there's a serious issue here. And yeah. it, it, it bothers me just from a lack of diversity standpoint, but it bothers me for the most part because we're missing an opportunity. Yeah. I mean, this is the only way we grow this and grow it quickly is if the best ideas went out, not the who has the best, you know, who golfs with who or who is a good friend. So I think hopefully some funds are going to come out and say, like, there are these amazing projects that aren't getting funded. We want in. And I think the more if any chance we get to shine some light on that, uh, we should absolutely do it. So, uh, yeah, I'm really glad. <clears throat> I'm really glad you guys brought that up. And we had a chance to hit on it because it's a big problem in Web3 and it needs to get solved now. Yeah. And Web3, actually, I've, I've seen some more. Uh, <laughs> get call, huh? No, no, you're good. <laughs> I've, I've seen more um, sort of lady run projects lately, which is great. But yeah, I'm mean, so far from anywhere near equal or close to. <clears throat> And it's on a, it's a tech thing in general. It's not just Web3. Um, so it's a systemic thing that needs to be addressed. And hope my hope, uh, <clears throat> my boundless optimism for what Web3 can be is that it just the nature of decentralization and um, the nature of DLT will help move us there as a society. Um, and, you know, at the we there's no there's no there should be no barriers based on your gender. Or, or anything else other yeah. than are you smart? Will you hustle? And you're gonna get the job done. That just should be the only things that matter. Yeah, um, absolutely. People, you know, I think I think there needs to be a push from all sides to and just empower the opportunity and confidence to, to for the other versities to reach out and join the space. Basically. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think I think that NFT.com is doing a pretty good job of it. Uh, I know at the uh, at Wagme in New York, there was a, a woman I wound up talking to who was something hex, I'm trying to remember yep. what her name was. But she was, you know, heavily involved and she's doing something kind of similar to what we're doing. I mean, she actually her production is much more professional looking than our stuff. <laughs> But it was cool to see, right? Now all of a sudden we can start networking and talking about, you know, how do you do this and what are you focusing on? And, you know, it's good to get a perspective that other than, you know, a middle-aged male <laughs> perspective yeah. on stuff. I don't want that perspective anymore. Yeah, it helps everybody. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, Anybody who is using some kind of a litmus test for who they're going to work with or who they're going to fund, they're going to end up losing out because they're going to miss that that diverse background, those diverse ideas. Um, so the projects that succeed are going to be the ones who embrace that. And uh, hopefully we can be a part of the solution in, in driving Web3 that way. 100%. I'm glad we got to touch on that. That was great. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> well, well we're we're running up a little close to 30 minutes here guys so if there's anything else that we want to give shout outs to or uh you know certainly smash the like button subscribe ask questions please 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 ask questions in the in the comments um i'd really really like to get some conversation rolling uh within these videos that their intent really is to spur conversation with the community so uh without that conversation happening after this, 
Um, we certainly appreciate everybody for watching, but please get involved. Tell us what you think. Uh, and tell us what you, what like... you want to see. I yeah, mean, if for you, sure. <laughs> if you want to see more GKC members, if you want to see more staff, if you want to see more external resources, um, yeah, we'll get them on. Cool. What do you want to see, Houdini? Well, when we're ready to finish up, I was going to play a thing, a new thing or whatever. If you guys will let me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, go right for it. Cool. Um, so this is a, one of the projects I'm working on. There's a few, and this one, you know, it could be a few years before anything happens with it, but uh, th I, this thing happened the other night, and it's kind of cool, so I thought I'd share it here. That's awesome, man. You need to put a link to that up in the Discord. Yes. Into the GKC lounge it goes. Or into, yeah, where it's supposed to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, don't do that. Put it in the comments here. Make yeah. people come here to look at look. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only be here. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. So uh, I was laughing there in the beginning or in the middle of that. Uh, oh, yeah. I have, I have my Google Home set up to say, to call me Inigo Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die. So every morning I get up and I go downstairs into the kitchen, it says, good morning, Inigo Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die. <laughs> oh, that's great. Nice. So the NFT space is all about stories, right? It's hell yeah. Yep. Media that's ever happened is all about stories. So that's yeah. awesome, dude. Thanks for sharing. Well, keep yeah. creating, keep telling stories, uh, keep active in the lounge so that we can know what the hell is going on with you. Um, and I'm real. I'm I'm looking forward to the point at which the three of us are able to get together in real life again because that was a hell of a lot of fun in New York. Can't wait. Yeah, that, that yeah. When I mean, we talk when marketplace and all that. When wag me? Like, come on, man. Me. Like, you, you can you can yeah. you can stop with the the um, NFT.com updates for a couple of weeks weeks. Uh, just get us together with an open bar. Yep. Right. <laughs> a weekly anyway. open bar just hopping around there the you go. <laughs> maybe we can maybe we can make a move around with fish tour or something like that that would, that would work for me and <laughs> that'd be dangerous <laughs> okay. so we'll start a little fund to have a gkc show go around and shoot in locations and then whoever can will show up to drink with y'all totally on board yeah. let's make it happen 
sweet. I'd love to see it. You guys are great, and cool. you know, the shows have been great, surprisingly good. I didn't expect so so well done and such great conversations. Sorry, but yeah, well, it's, it's high budget. We you know we yeah, put a lot of time and effort into planning it, right? There was like the hours and hours of preparation before the show, <laughs> right? We did, filling out surveys. And, yeah, it's, it's a whole lot. Man. <laughs> you find the green room, like for I just gave up, and then we had all these problems. It's all Right. It's all good. All right. Well, again, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we've definitely run up on time here, but uh, definitely worth the extra minutes, I think. And uh, yeah, Sam, good to see you That's again. Out. Houdini, Thanks, we'll check you, you soon. Time. And uh, everybody, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks, guys.